Hey, this is Matt once again. We're back to another video. This is a paid request from the movie reviewer next door. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I'll get to it as soon as I can. And this time is Cold Blood, the 2019 film starring John Renault, who I do like. I liked him in Leon the Professional. I even liked him in Godzilla, the 1998 movie. This gets like a 4.7 on IMDb out of 10. I can see why I thought this film sucked. This was an awfully boring movie that dragged so badly dragged, man. This, man, I'd rather drag my dick through... Well, not broken glass, but I don't know. Through my carpet. It'll be you know, some burn. It won't be fun, but it'll give me something more to talk about than this movie. How you did that dip burn? Well, I was humping the carpet. It was bad peyote. Let me tell you about it. And it's a foreign film. Well, I, I guess it's a foreign film because everybody had. I don't know what the hell it was. I looked at the, the crew and it's all out of foreign names, I'm assuming it's a foreign film. It takes place in Washington State, though. At least they say Washington State in the woods. Long story short, John Renault is this hit man, so they're really trying to play up the Leon the Professional type of popularity John Renault had. And he lives, he's at this secluded cabin in the woods. And one day, this woman crashes her snowmobile, steedoo, whatever it is, into a tr few trees, flies off, and lands. Heavily injures herself to point John Renault finds her, takes her, and takes care of her. It's a movie that wants to play itself out of order the, because it's going to try to reveal stuff later, so. Some scenes that shows what John Renault did before this and what the woman did before this, leading up to this event. I gotta go into this with spoilers from the get go. I'm sorry, man. I just I have to. The characters. You have this cop who's like a wannabe Joe Kinnaman. Like you look at Joe Kinnaman, this guy wants to be him so badly. He's like a New York homicide detective. They're trying to have that Joel Kinnaman accent, you know. Well, I guess it's less Southern than I make him sound like, but I don't know, just... The guy didn't do much for me. What you find out is John Renault killed this guy in a steam room, which I guess he had, like, an ice bullet that will melt after impact. The guy he killed was worth $200 million dollars. So the top and this other guy trying to figure out who did this and who John Renault is. Yeah, this one guy that is following the woman and like tracing her steps. Which all I remember from him is he's black and he follows the trail and then he dies because he's an idiot. Which I'll get to that in a minute. And the film is just very dull, very flat, very boring, lame characters. John Renault, all you know about him is he likes to read of The Art of War. How original. How original, The Art of War. I just see a whole movie called The Art of War with Wesley Snipes that was done over a decade ago. More so, actually. So John Renault, he reads The Art of War. And he'll say lines like, The wolf had the taste of blood. A wolf never forgets the taste of blood. Sooner or later, have to kill him. Oh, I wonder if this is going to relate to John Renault later on, where he's the wolf and he had a taste for blood and someone's going to have to kill him. Gee, I wonder. Hmm, I wonder. Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. 
So you have either the girl being taken care of by John Renault, him going out, bringing an animal bat that he killed. She gets up at one point. She opened the wound. He stitches her up again. Keeps asking her why she's out here. Goes back to the cops doing nothing but having crappy food at diners or having thumbs up their asses or the guy sits down in his very rich place for a cop you make a lot of damn money buddy watching with like a football game oh big surprise the girl is not out there just because she's the daughter of the guy John Renault killed and apparently she had a bit of training although you tell none of that in this movie I mean, training my ass. The Tear Bears have more goddamn training than you, lady. I guess that she'll try to be a Secret Service agent since you're about as competent as them. She didn't, I mean, she doesn't know how to fight. She doesn't know how to do anything. <clears throat> she easily gets tricked to this pure... I, I thought this was kind of funny. John Renault made a fake scarecrow sitting on the pier like he's trying to the fish. So it's like a scarecrow made of straw. I thought that was kind of funny. And you see flashbacks of the girl from a limo seeing her dad's funeral. And she says the line, he missed my birth. I missed his death. And I'm also sitting there going, so wait a minute, you're telling her, her plan, her plan was to purposely drive a snowmobile so she flies off and got critically injured? So either she's a dumbass or she's an idiot. If she purposely did that to get critically hurt, so maybe this hit man saves her and doesn't just blow her brains out then she's a dumbass if she did that by accident i got trained and then i got killed this guy whoopsie daisy oh shit then she's a complete moron i'll say moron dumbass or moron it's either way and i'm i don't think the actress was that good of an actress i don't think her her line delivery was that natural very stilted there's no tension between her and John Renault. You know something's up with her earlier because she has a dream where the guy comes up and shoots her in the head. If she knows nothing about John Renault, why would you dream that? You've been hurt, someone takes you to a cabin and stitches you up? Or you don't want to have a random dream of someone coming up and shooting in the head? No, that means she knows who John Renault is. If she knows who John Renault is, then there's something to her character. Either, okay, what else could it be? If it's a top, why would she not tell anyone? She doesn't look like a hit woman because she's not believable in that. So, oh, yep, she's the daughter. Lo and behold. So, that was predictable. They played their card, their, their hand, too early for that. With that dream nightmare sequence. The tops really do nothing except kind of fiddle around until... The, the the black guy looks up something or texts something and the cop's able to see it on his phone and then gets his buddy they go up there Malcolm that was the black guy's name Malcolm Malcolm he just tossed with the guy who she got the snowmobile from taught you know taught in this little uh diner follows them finds the cabin and just shoots into the cabin then he calls off for the girl and I'm sitting there going so you ruined the element of surprise because now he know John Renault knows you're out there you're wasting bullets you could have hit the girl because it's the cabin he can't see who's in the cabin he's blindly firing so now, again, he's given his position. He could have hit the girl accidentally. 
This guy is a moron, and as a moron as he should, he gets killed off just John Renault stalks him, stabs him in the neck one time. And he dies for his stupidity. And then the girl never has any strength, never has any good moments, never has any showcase of her training. <clears throat> she tries to run off, John Renault follows her, has a gun on her, sees the wolf, shoots away, tells... I guess, you know, you could assume he's tired of killing. But you don't really get much in terms of his character, his story, his background, any thoughts of his psychology. Only the, the barest, tamest elements. A wolf never forgets to taste the blood. Sooner or later you have to kill him. So he, he has the gun empty, the two tops come... Wannabe Joel Kinnaman, I get a what what Kinnaman shoots, uh, which I will admit, Joel Kinnaman has grown on me because I like Silent Night. I liked him in the last uh, Suicide Squad movie. And he's better than this guy. Shoots John Renault. They get the girl. They go back to the cabin. Other cops are there now. Movie's over. Such a boring, useless movie. Any good I could say, there's some decent camera shots of the cabin and other moments. Like when John Renault dies, there's a shot where it showcases the blood going through the snow. The last shot where the camera's going up and showing the wide steep of the cabin and the snowy, you know, the snowy landscape. <coughs> Even John Renault seems tired and bored with this. And, I mean, if you want to see a decent John Renault film, go watch The Crimson Rivers. Even The Crimson Rivers 2, I'd rather watch than this. I remember having issues with that film, but I'd rather watch that than this. Yeah, Crimson Rivers 2. I can't say it's the worst... Ro well, it's not the worst John Renault film I've seen, because he was in the Rollerball remake... And that makes me more angry, because I love the original Rollerball, but the remake is garbage. And John Renault was the villain in that, so it's not the worst I've seen him in, but pretty close. I just don't see what anyone could get out of this movie. Badly paced. Not much in terms of dialogue or character. Scenes that feel like they dragged on forever. Uninteresting characters. Blase dialogue, definite lack of action, characters just doing nothing but stupid shit like Malcolm. I don't shoot at a cabin and maybe I hit him. Oh, woo. Well, you gotta stab him in the neck. How you feel about that, buddy? The lead girl, she has no drive, she has no charisma, she has no energy to her. If she trains, she didn't sh show any of that. And again, like, how she got there in the first place. Either she was too stupid, she didn't know what she was doing, and fell off the snowmobile and almost got killed. Or she purposely hit a snowmobile that did close to him and still almost got killed. It was stupid either way. Acting a subpar, just dull and flat. And you've seen this type of stuff before. Someone wants to get revenge on this guy who killed their dad. You've seen a ton of movies of that. Done a lot better than this. If it's not their dad, then their mentor or their father figure or whatever the case. You know what film that did that better? Lucky Number Slevin. With Joseph, uh, uh, Josh Hartnett and Bruce Willis. Lucky Number Seven did that a lot better. A lot better. Watch that movie instead. There's a ton of movies that did that better. Here, if you liked it, be my guest. But 4.7 out of 10, I would give it even lower. But yeah, it's not a beloved movie. I can see why. So, take that for what you will. Take care. I don't think Movie Reviewer Next Door saw it, but some people were saying, Oh, it's John Renault's comeback. I like to know who the hell said that. I'm so, I'm sorry, sir. You're you're wrong. This ain't no damn comeback. It's 
It's about as good as the comeback kid from Corey Feldman. About as good as that. But no. You, know, you want to see John Renault, the Crimson Rivers, Leon the Professional. Yes, even Godzilla 1998, which I like that movie. And John Renault was actually pretty fun in that. Do even that movie, I would. I def I like that movie. I think that's a fun film. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.